NBC News correspondent Vaughn Hilliard in Las Vegas and former Republican congressman from Florida, David Vajali. Vaughn, the former president is also celebrating the Wisconsin Supreme Court banning ballot uh, drop boxes. So that's very on brand for him. Andrea, this is not a defensive game that Donald Trump is playing. This is pure offense. Despite a DOJ investigation, despite the January 6th Select Committee's investigation, despite the Fulton County District Attorney's investigation, despite him uh, set to be deposed at the end of this week by lawyers for the New York Attorney General's office as part of their investigation into the Trump Organization, this is an individual who is continues to look back onto 2020. You said it there. The ruling by the Wisconsin Supreme Court last week, in which they determined it is up to the Republican led state legislature to determine the use of drop boxes in this state. He is, over the course of this weekend, made the case that uh, that was uh, ultimately a part of the reason why the election was rigged and taken from him in 2020. And he made the case, in his own words, that, quote, that the uh, electoral college votes should be reclaimed from Joe Biden and given given to him, again, quote, the actual winner. Uh, this is, again, this is an offensive game here. You have a former president who is here in Nevada and then as well as Alaska continuing to try to press the case and persuade the American electorate that the 2020 election was wrongfully taken from him. But then you also have him trying to use these, inve these investigations as a political prop to make the case that Democrats are not focused on the other issues facing Americans around the country. And then the third leg of this is that you see him with not only the leading candidate for governor here in Nevada, but also the U.S. Senate candidate here in Nevada. But then he goes and makes his way up to Alaska, where he's alongside Sarah Palin, his uh, backed candidate for the congressional seat there, as well as the candidate running against Lisa Murkowski. He is using these investigations as a way to prop up these candidates who he sees potentially being loyal to him in 2023 and beyond. And David Jolly, let's talk about Governor Larry Hogan, the Republican governor, of course, in Maryland, arguing that the, you know, Trump's influence over the Republican Party has diminished dramatically. Uh, let's talk about the evidence of that. It's, it's a mixed result from primary results so far, right? It is. And look, with all due respect to Governor Hogan, there are the the Republican establishment leaders, if you will, the intelligentsia, and then there are the voters. And I think his grip on Republican voters is much stronger than Republican leaders in Washington, D.C. But I think this also goes to why Donald Trump's on the trail. He knows he has to play offense, not just to discredit the investigators of the J6 committee and, and prosecutors in New York and Georgia. But, Andrea, he's also... 100 days away from the conversation whether Ron DeSantis is the heir apparent to the Republican nomination. Donald Trump knows that. He cannot let November be about Mitch McConnell becoming the majority leader, Kevin McCarthy, the House leader, and this guy Ron DeSantis in Florida, perhaps the next presidential nominee. Ron, uh, Donald Trump cannot take anything for granted, and I think that's what you're seeing. He's playing offense. And let's talk for a moment about the January 6th hearings, David, because now they're postponing uh, they may be getting a lot more evidence after Cipollone and the possibility yeah. of Bannon flirting with coming to them. Uh, but this schedule is very much in flux. It, it certainly is. And I think it's because the Cipollone testimony or transcribed uh, testimony, if you will, was a product of the Cassidy Hutchison hearing. We know that now. Cipollone had to answer to questions related to whether privilege could be broken around what broadly you'd call crime fraud, though real attorneys would describe it differently. So there is the Cipollone matter. But, Andrea, there's, the Steve Bannon matter is a tricky one. If the committee thinks he has a testimony to provide that is important, then why not do it in the public eye like Steve Bannon and, frankly, Donald Trump are going to want to happen? The J6 committee has to play through that and war game that a bit because we know it would be a circus publicly. But it's hard to say Steve Bannon has important information, but the J6 committee wants to keep it behind closed doors. That's a tough story to tell. Well, that clearly is the case that he has important information. He was there when it was all being organized, when the so-called conspirators were talking about it. So... We have to see how this plays out. They obviously have some big decisions to make. Vaughn Hilliard, David Jolly, thanks to both.